Hello friends, uh, I'm Arun Desai. Uh, we are looking for uh, Android development course and we are in mobile application development using Flutter for third year BTEC course. Uh, so uh, we are in lesson number two that is Dart and Flutter. We also have introduction to widget in this lesson. So we'll start with uh, next point and that is called introduction to widget so uh, talking about widget widget is a small component or you can say a basic unit for user interface in flutter application you can have a simple text box as a widget you can have a custom navigation drawer as a widget you can create multiple components and that is also called a widget so the beauty of flutter widget is that you can combine and nest many widgets and you can create a rich and dynamic ui with the help of small components flutter provides a wide range of built-in widgets and those widgets are like text widget boxes there are there are buttons available images available text fields available many containers available wherein you can put uh, your widgets there like container is there row widget is there column widget is there we have sized boxes there uh, we also have a customized suit also uh, to have those widgets there in flutter applications so basically uh, on your screen uh, which you can see as a widget at the uh, right hand side the first image shows is about add to cart then we have an icon then we have a button so those are basically called uh, small widgets which uh, are there in flutter uh, first widget is called text widget looks like this wherein you can put your text as well we have icon widget you can show uh, to your user by using some images we also have a button widget at the right side of uh, we have a complex widget uh, like we have a uh, button over there on that we have a text we can add this in row we can have a um, icon widget also there so we can create we can use the widget simple widgets to create a complex widgets as well and those are the examples uh, of widgets there are multiple categories available uh, for this widgets and those categories are total 14 to 15 categories available uh, in this widget uh, for flutter uh, while creating an application so starting with we have first category called accessibility so there are sets of widget that can make a flutter application more easily accessible we also have animation and motion so those widgets add animations and motions to other widgets we also have assets images icons so those widget takes charge of assets such as it displays images it shows icons it also have um, fonts available there we can use fonts as a asset there and we can change the uh, interesting fonts to change uh, to have there in your applications we have async category this pro this category uh, this async category provides async functionality in your uh, flutter application we have few basic um, uh, widgets available and those widgets are bundled widgets and which are ap uh, absolutely necessary while uh, developing an flutter application we also have cupertino uh, category so those are widgets which are used in ios development uh, we have uh, widgets in input category so if you you want to interact with rather user wants to interact with your application such input widgets are also available there are interaction models also available which are used to uh, manage events and routes in different views and we can use those in applications as well we have layouts also we can use layouts and we can put multiple widgets on that so this category 
library is also available we have layouts different layouts like uh, we have a container we have rows we have columns so we can put those multiple simple widgets into layouts we have material component as a category there and this is basically used uh, material design uh, given by google so those set of widgets are uh, called uh, material components or material category type of components we have another category called painting and effects this is the set of widgets that apply visual changes to their child widgets and without changing their layouts or shape we have scrolling category there provides scroll ability to uh, number of widgets or you can say we have a set of widgets and we can provide the scrolling ability uh, to this by using the scrolling uh, ability as rather scrolling scrolling category widgets we also have a styling so we need to deal with themes responsiveness and sizing of uh, application so styling is there we have a text widget to display the text so this is how we broadly categorize uh, the widgets uh, there are total 14 number of uh, 14 number of categories available in case of widgets now we are moving to next point which is called types of widgets so there are two types of widgets available and those are broadly divided into stateless widgets and stateful widgets so talking about stateless widgets and stateful widgets the important uh, terminology used here is state so the state is the information that can be read synchronously when the widget is built and might change during the lifetime of widget so the important uh, terminology here is state and the state of an application can vary simply by defining as anything that exists in memory of that app while app is running so this includes all the widget that maintains the ui of app including the buttons text fonts icons animations etc so we start with <clears throat> first type is stateless widgets the widgets whose state cannot be altered once they are built are called stateless widgets so we have only a built method there as and when uh, we built those components of widgets there uh, if we build those components after that we cannot make we cannot have changes there in any components so this those widgets are immutable so once they are built uh, they are in use so any amount of change in variables icon buttons or retrieving data cannot be changed the state of an application right stateless widgets override the build method and returns the widget we have stateful widget also the widget whose state can be altered once they are built are called stateful widgets the states are mutable and can be changed multiple times in their lifetime this simply means that state of an app can change multiple times and with different set of variables inputs and data stateful widget override uh, the create state method and returns the state so basically when we uh, look at the stateless widgets and stateful widget there are multiple states uh, from which we need to go when we are there in stateful widgets otherwise in stateless widget there is a only one method called build method as and when you build those widgets uh, those widgets are in use whereas in stateful widgets you need to follow uh, multiple steps you need to go through multiple stages uh, to create a state to create and use those states so we have a method called create state init state which are there before build we also set the state when we build the application so set state method generally used to change the state while we are a, rather the application is in running state Uh, there are certain uh, methods available so uh, when we talk about stateful widgets uh, it has its own life cycle uh, and the stateful widgets are go with multiple uh, states uh, the widget life cycle has you can say a sequence of event that occurs when a widget is created 
updated and destroyed so there are total seven eight methods available and it follows multiple stages which are available there in life cycle so we have a create state there we have a init state there we have a did change of dependencies we have a build method did update widget set state widget deactivate method and dispose method so widget can move through all such methods or you can say states as and when required so starting with uh, first method which are there in life cycle called create state method this method is required and create a state of object for a widget it holds all the mutable state for that widget the state object is associated with build context by setting the mounted property to true next method is in its state this method is automatically called after the widget it inserted into the tree it executed only once when the state object is created for first time uses this method for initializing variable and subscribing the data source another method called did change dependencies the framework calls this method immediately after in its state it also called when an object that the widget depends on change use this method to handle changes in dependencies but it is rarely needed as build method is always called after this the most important method in life cycle is build method this method required and is called many times during life cycle it is called after did change dependencies and whenever the widget needs to rebuild update the ui of the widget in this method we have did update widget this method is called when the parent widget changes its configuration and required the widget to rebuild it receives the old widget as an argument and allow you to compare it with new widget use this method to handle changes in the widget configuration next method is set state method this is also important as a developer the set state method notifies the framework that the internal state of the widget has changed and need to be updated whenever you modify the state use this method to trigger and rebuild a trigger use this method to trigger a rebuild of the widget of ui next method is deactivate this method is called when the widget is removed from the widget tree but can be reinserted before the current frame changes are finished use this method for any cleanup or pausing ongoing operations next method is dispose method this method is called when the state of object is permanently removed from the widget tree this method is used for cleaning up resources such as data listeners and closing connections so on your screen this is basically a diagram for having <coughs> those methods <coughs> and from you can see a state so as and when constructor uh, construction constructor function is called we have uh, initiated those operations and it calls the create state method after that it goes into init state method uh, did change dependencies it checks the dependencies based on uh, what is required for to build the application we have a built application if we change something it becomes uh, generally uh, dirty so if we have a change dependencies it should uh, becomes dirty and then we need to call set state method also if we update something there in widget it also becomes a dirty and we need to call build methods we need to rebuild uh, when we have a day updates there we set some changes uh, in a state there after that we have a deactivate method and dispose method so this is how the sequence are there for um, we can see uh, this is how the sequence for <coughs> the widget life cycle and this is how the stateless widget looks like the root you can say your application is basically a root so it comes up with a material app class we need to call your class there in uh, with material app you have a boilerplate there with the scaffolds so scaffold contains <coughs> multiple uh, attributes over there we have app bar there we have uh, body there we need to write uh, uh, we need to have multiple widgets there in body we 
provide actions also there to scaffold and we need to return material app just to have material design there uh, out from the application. So this is how we uh, get to know about uh, the widgets and this is all about introduction of widgets. Thank you.